is preparing. Hello, everybody. You're very welcome. Come on in. We're here waiting for you. We're okay. about 30 seconds ahead of time, but that's all right. Steve has this woken up really, really early. No, 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 no. He, he's woken up really, really early. It's really, really late here. So I think it's 5 p.m. with you, Mary, right? 5 p.m. for me. It's 7 a.m. for Steve. Yes. 7 a.m. And me. it's 10 p.m. for me. So I guess we're truly global, eh? We're at all is different levels of intoxication. Is what we're <laughs> no? Okay. No. Is, okay. Is, 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 it, is it too early for you to be drinking, Steve? Or have you had um, a little tipple to start the day? <laughs> Well, is it water or is it vodka? That's the question. That's the question. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not going to tell us though, are you? <laughs> We're just going to see how this interview goes and we'll know maybe by the end. As we deteriorate. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so awesome. Mary, have you had a wee tipple yet? Or? No, I actually haven't. I was on another webinar and I was talking profit first, Ronan. So, you know, okay. I barely can do that completely sober. So I thought, you know, I better not. And plus... I'll be honest, I was a little nervous about this interview. I was like, oh my gosh. <sighs> you know, so. I was Not as nervous as me. I'm, yeah. I'm the one under the microscope here. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys. You're all very welcome. Lee, good to see you. And Maggie's here. And Sue is here all the way from the UK. Sue, you're up late, 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 late like me. Fair play to you. Um, who else is here? Alicia is here. Alicia, you're welcome. Cold, good to see you all the way from Texas. Seraphine's um, here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, oh, Carol is Harley. here. They're okay. still all coming in, so that's why I haven't started yet or handed over yet. So, Steve, can you sing a song? Have you got a voice? Or <laughs> oh, do, you do a dance or what, 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 what's your party? I can, I can do a dance. I'm a bit of a salsa dancer. Okay. Um, <laughs> hey. I love me a little bit of salsa. So don't don't even start there. You wouldn't get you won't get me back on the panel. Okay, start, you'll, you'll just spend the night dancing the or the morning. And, and for the sales course, I teach a rumba. Okay. So during the Very sales good. course, I teach people how to rumba because I think it's important in a sale to be able to move. <laughs> Aloha, Aubrey, all the way from Hawaii. It's a whole different time there. Oh my, there's like... Wow. Oh, Cindy, what time is it in Hawaii? Cindy, I didn't get it cut. It's just, I'm trying to hide it. I like my hair has gotten... Somebody's commenting about my hair that it looks like it's cut. It's just, I'm trying to hide it all. It's so much hair. <laughs> but yeah, Aubrey well, Horde from Hawaii. I don't know what time it is there. It's one... five hour difference from me. So I don't know, Aubrey, what time is it in Hawaii? Aloha. It's 1, 1 p.m. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. for yeah. a play to you. St. Louis. Hello, Hawaii. Abby. And says she's from Connecticut. So he's on your time zone, right? Is that Connecticut the same as your yeah, time Connecticut zone? is. Yeah, that's Eastern. Yep. So it's 5 p.m. It's the beginning well, of the There's one big advantage. There's one big advantage of wearing a cap. I, I can hide my hair yes. in there. You know? I've done the same. I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've hidden it in my scalp. It's there. but it's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, you're very, very welcome. It's a true honor to have Steve and Mary here again. And they're going to talk all things marketing. So I'm going to disappear now and hand over to the experts. And I'll pop in at the end and just try and sum up the conversation if I can. That'd Thanks a great. million, Steve. Appreciate it. You've been Thank here. You. Thank you, Mary, for running these. Love yeah. you both. Thank you. Which... Thank you, Ronan. Oh, my gosh. And thank you, Steve, for... I know you've probably been up and had a full day's work practically already. You, you just are that man that never sleeps. I think I don't sleep, but this man like never sleeps. He taught an amazing workshop. As you guys know, we're all at home, right? And Steve's set, definitely home in Australia where he's used to jet setting all over and teaching and he, he taught this amazing workshop online. I unfortunately didn't get to be a part of it, but my business partner, Jamie was in all of it and loved it. I know our great friend, Allison Tyler Jones, who, you know, told me all about it, loved it. As a matter of fact, she said she was going to be here today. She may be in there somewhere, but, um, but yeah, he was up at all different hours. Like, I don't know when you ever slept for three weeks. Like, I don't even <laughs> well, know what started, you did. Started at, <laughs> went to bed about 9am almost yeah. every day. For three weeks. It was, Went to bed at 9 a.m. because you were <laughs> teaching in the middle of the night there and yeah. doing an amazing job. So welcome, everybody. And um, let's just let's just go right to town here. I'm so excited. You know, I know that Steve spoke, um, speaks in a lot of places, but you spoke this year at Imaging USA, right? I know yeah. a lot of people got to know you there. And yeah. um, I'll do this because he's probably too kind and will not. Steve um, has, um, where can they check out your, your website name is? Steve Separito Education. SteveSaporitoEducation.com, Steve right? Yes. Check that out. And he does coaching all over the world. 
um, you know, an accomplished um, studio owner, 15 years, right? You were in the yeah. owning studios, operating right. studios, and has been coaching and real deal here. And if anybody's ever met me in their entire life, I'm not a big fan of the not real deal. So I, I appreciate <laughs> new, innovative and authentic coaching. And I found that with Steve just actually the first time I, I saw him a little bit in imaging, but then, you know, talking to him just could not get over just one conversation and I had pages and pages of notes. So um, Steve, tell us a little bit about kind of your background where, you know, give us a little glimpse. Um, well, I am a chartered accountant. So I became an accountant because I always wanted to own my own business. And I thought that if I had that accounting background, that would lay a great foundation for any business. And one of my clients approached me once to run a feasibility study on opening a photographic studio mm. in a shopping mall. And the figures came out great. He opened up, um, was hugely successful, but not hugely sensible. So there's a very big difference between making money and keeping money <laughs> and making money and being honest enough so the government doesn't come in and... <laughs> Uh -huh. do things to you. So yeah. um, there was an opportunity to purchase that, um, that business, uh, the franchise, it was a fran part of a franchise and the franchise all contacted me and asked if I had any clients that would be interested in purchasing it. Um, and I thought, well, I love photography. Let's give it a go. Um, and I walked in, knew nothing, nothing. I really didn't know how much I didn't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> until I started this business. Now, would and you agree that most business owners figure that out pretty quickly? Oh, <laughs> they didn't know what they didn't know. <laughs> oh my God. Like, it, was, it was insane. Uh -huh. um, and I, I bought a business and there was a, a fridge full of films um, because back in those days we, you know, we were film yeah. and I had no idea what to do with them. So I had to learn pretty quick. Um, so that studio um, I grew to a uh, million dollar plus studio. It took me 10 years to figure it out. And I pretty much just covered my costs for 10, for 10 years. And then when I figured it out, it just skyrocketed. So that back then, and I've been coaching now for 14 years. That's so been 14 years since, since then. Mm -hmm. um, I then opened up a, a second studio. Um, that one didn't do as well. We did about maybe 80, 85, $90,000 a month. Mm -hmm. out of that one and then we had a uh, I opened up a overflow studio because my main studio was booked out and we couldn't put any more clients in so my third studio was an overflow studio mm -hmm. um, and that um, we probably did about 60 to 60 to 70 thousand dollars a month out of that one so overall we're about two and a half to three million mm -hmm. um, but that was you know three business three studios ago. And now all I do is coach. So since I've been coaching, I've built, um, you know, taking people who are working out of the boot of their car, uh, trunk of their car, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, creating some incredible businesses just, you know, from startup. So any, you know, I think my biggest client is turning over 17 million. We started from zero. Yeah. Um, and it's possible for people working from home to do, an easy thirty, forty thousand dollars a month. So legally, 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 legally. <laughs> legally. <laughs> I know it's possible. Not <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Wait do a minute. It. Wait a minute. Listen. <laughs> so you say that you know, and I mean, you know, you're not throwing these numbers out. And I realized this very quickly because we've all been in that situation where we've talked to somebody and they start throwing numbers out, and then you start adding them together, and you're like, well, that didn't make sense at all. But when Steve talks about them in such a nonchalant way, it's because you, you not only lived it, you've lived it, but you, you believe in it. Like it's just, yeah. does, it seems incredibly normal to you that that's, those numbers are incredibly achievable. I realized that from day one talking to you, I was like, oh, wow, he really means it. Like it's it is, not, yeah. It is normal. Yeah, it, it should, should be, be normal. Doing. It should it's be normal. Be I agree with you. I think it's interesting that you say you came into the business with this, you know, financial, you know, your accounting background, your business background, but had to learn photography and you turned it into such a success. Would you agree? And I don't think I'm going on a limb here at all, but would you agree that it's the complete opposite for most 
Most. Small business creatives are photographers, right? Yeah. yeah. Most. I think I'm a freak because I came into this business buying a business. Mm -hmm. uh, I paid $200,000. Mm -hmm. 30, 30, oh God, it was 30 years ago. I don't know how this <laughs> um, happened. To buy a business and I needed to get my return on investment. Right. So um, a, a shopping mall paying $20,000 a month in rent. Mm spurred me to you know make the money so <laughs> i guess so um, uh, you know <laughs> the necessity is the mother of all invention right so i i had to make the money and i, I never felt good enough to be around photographers um i learned how to photograph i i taught my photographers how to photograph because we needed to, to be shooting for product so I, I taught them how to photograph, but I never photographed a client because I felt I didn't feel good enough mm -hmm. as a photographer to come to something like um, Imaging USA or any of those things. So I was never told we couldn't make that money. Right. Right. Oh. Hmm. And so for me, it's like, okay, well, a normal business, this is a normal turnover and we need to you know, make it happen. Mm -hmm. So in, 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 in my world, it was normal. And it wasn't until I sold my businesses and my lab approached me um, and said, will you do some coaching for some of our clients? And I'm like, I don't know what to, I don't know what to say to these people. How am I going to coach photographers? And it wasn't until then that I was led on to this big secret that I was their biggest client um, right. from a spending point of view by multiples of what most people spend. So right. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and no one had told you that. And, and I understand that. And I mean, I understand that it's different now when you owned your studio studios, it was a little different, meaning we weren't as connected and didn't have this constant drumbeat of information, good and bad being thrown yeah. at us. Yes. You know, it was a little different. So I, I think it was easier. I mean, our studio is 26 years old. So, you know, we've been, we, we remember those days as uh, some of those days as well. But, you know, you said no one ever told you that, and I appreciate that. But more than that, would you say, and you, because you work with so many photographers, but more mm -hmm. than that, would you say that we're just telling ourselves that these, like, do you find that it's mostly that, that we just tell ourselves, well, I can't do that. It won't work in my town. I'm not good enough. Yeah. Right. Uh, that is the biggest block. Um, it yeah. is pretty much the only block. Um, I spend most of my time reprogramming. Um, belief systems in people um, and and that's my business changed when um, I studied NLP which is neuro-linguistic programming um, and it's a study of human behavior and replicating successful behavior and until I changed my beliefs um, my business didn't thrive so I have a lot of NLP embedded in what I, what I coach people um, because we're our biggest enemy. Um, yeah. We are the ones that are the block. Like when people saying, you know, my clients won't pick up the phone. Usually most those people are picking up the phone, hoping that their clients don't pick up the phone. Hmm. And, yes. and we, we tend to get what we put out, right? Right. So, yes. <laughs> so, yes. You know, yes. And the way, the way you leave a message, um, you know, they're like, you know, I leave all the messages. And when I get them to record their messages and send them to me, I wouldn't return your message either. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so, so let's deep dive that just for a second. Because I know this is, I mean, this, you know, of course, when I think, you know, of what you share and what you talk, this is a big, this is a big part of it. This is a big broad sweep of, you know, him deep diving and very, very gosh, personal. Like you said, he will listen to your messages. You will be sending him recordings and pictures and it's, 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 it's humiliating kind of, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, you know, but you, you hear this, but you know, what is the number one piece of advice that you're probably giving most of us out there when you listen to the message, what's like the top mistake that we're making? Um, I think the opening, just being confident. Uh, mm -hmm. Our clients borrow confidence from us. And if we're not confident in our belief of what we do and how important our industry is. And I, I find that most photographers 
don't believe, really believe how important we are as an industry and don't realise what sort of an impact we can make on a family, on a couple, on somebody's self-esteem. And the world has become, um, has become cynical, has become looking or constantly looking for the negatives in everyone. And we're in this industry where we're looking for the best version of, of this family, the best version of this couple, creating the best version of this couple. So it goes beyond the lighting and the posing because you can't fake self-confidence. So preparing the client before a shoot to feel confident, to, to go through a discovery process where they're discovering what's awesome about each other, making people play again and going out of their way for each other again before we photograph them, not for the camera, for their relationship. When we photograph people peaking in this state of mind, we begin to photograph what matters to a client. And when we do that, I think that's the missing ingredient. Um, we, we, a lot of people are worried about how a photograph looks and it's got to look amazing. But th that third dimension is missing. The soul, the heart of that person um, because most people have lost their soul. They're going through life, stepping through the motions. And until as an industry, we say, hey, what is it about this person that you love? And for some of these couples, it's the very first time they've heard why. Was anybody else crying a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Gosh. Okay, guys, if you all had the chance to talk, log in last week or, you know, listen to the recording, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I got a chance to talk to Tim last week. I'm talking to Steve. Are you hearing the similarities? Meaning, are you hearing them, these amazing genius people say, first of all, you're talking about confidence and yeah. you're talking about relationships I mean, really and truly, that's what we're talking about. And this yeah. is, this, in your opinion, would you say supersedes even our technical ability? Oh, absolutely. I've, I've seen, I've seen the most brilliant, technically perfect photographs never leave a hard drive. Mm. Yes. And that same photographer completely missed the mark technically, but that's what the client put on their wall because it captured a bit of it, a tiny bit of their soul. And then I've seen some not so technically perfect people, let's call it that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, making a hundred times more than this technically perfect person because they get people yes. and they get the heart of a person and they get, and I'm not saying we need to be taking crappy photos. No, of course not. But I'm saying that photograph that you won an award for is the client buying that and, and shooting for awards, shooting for clients. We need to get over our work. We're not photographing for us. We're photographing for our client and making it relative to the client. So discovering what they want um, becomes really important. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The problem is most clients don't know what they want. And that's where that discovery process has to happen. Um, to help them see what they what they truly want out of this experience, um, I think the biggest issue is is that most most of our industry believes that the experience starts from the moment we, that we pick up our camera. Mm -hmm. In reality, the experience starts from the very first phone call, and most of the experience happens between the time that we have that first contact with the client to the time that they walk into our door that is the most important part of this entire experience. And most of our industry is missing that piece of the pie. Yes. Because I could not agree more. Yes. You're so <laughs> right. So what is that? So you're okay. So I'm just this, I think this, this bears repeating. So you're saying that the most important part of a portrait session, a photography session happens know, before we ever pick up the camera, the portrait experience. Portrait. 
My apologies. What you've experienced because a session to most people means you're right. Photographing somebody. Okay. What you've most... experienced yes. starts from the, from the moment they start reading your marketing, the moment you have that first contact with them right through to the next generation. Mm. Right. That's the portrait experience because our industry is teaching us that the only way to make more money is to get more clients, to get more clients, to get more clients. In reality, it's far easier to keep a client and to serve that client multiple times and to get your clients to use you more often, to give them the reason to come back to you than constantly be mining for new work, new right. clients, educating them again preparing them again, all of that work that it takes to bring it on board a client and educate a client, we're replicating over and over and over again, whereas we're ignoring all the really easy stuff when it comes to marketing to get that client to come back again. Mm. It's because you're, you're saying, and I, I, I call it refining, not mining, just refining the existing, not mining for those new. Yeah. Because the energy that we spend and the, and actually it's more expensive when you say it, dollars, even just talking about money, it's more expensive to get new clients than it is to, to keep and take care of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it takes time to educate them. Yeah. It takes time, it takes time to filter the good from the bad. Um, you're spending money on advertising mm -hmm. when we're ignoring um, what's available to us. So I, I tend to sort of put it, put it like this, we, we tend to be, if we were farmers, we'd be constantly looking for a new field to plow. And if a photographer was a farmer, they would be plowing each inch of that field by hand because we want it to look perfect. And then we would be planting every seed by hand and watering that, watering that seed and waiting for that crop to grow. But in the meantime, we're looking for our next plot of land to, to, to plow and then we get our plow out and we, we're plowing and plowing and we run back and we water the seeds by hand and we're getting the next one going, but we never harvest. Mm. Like we never go back and harvest. We wait for the wind to blow us some of that seed or some of that crop, but we're too busy looking for the next one. Right. And we're too busy plowing and doing all the hard work in plowing and planting and, and watering that we never come back and harvest our crop like wedding photographers it, it, it's so prevalent in wedding photography um, there's so there's so much so much that people could be harvesting out of, out of a wedding um, and we just forget about it because we're too yes. busy for the next client and the, the next field to plow and we do all the work but don't take we take a minimal reward and clients, the clients that spend the most seem to be the ones that refer the most clients to us. Right. The ones that happily spend, the happy that the ones that um, are spending because they want to spend and spend the most, they, they're the ones that send us more and more referrals. Um, and I think as an industry, we tend to believe that the more they spend, the more we've burnt them. It's not the case if we do it properly. What does properly look like though? What does that mean? It means that you're creating something that matters to a client. It means that we've listened to them and it means that we've made a difference. And it means that we've taken somebody who um, didn't believe in themselves, didn't feel loved, didn't feel seen and allowed them permission to feel loved and to, and maybe for the first time heard what heard their why um, we've given them permission again to play with their children because there's a lot of guilt in taking time away from work um, you know i've interviewed a lot of my clients clients and the stories we're hearing is that you know you've saved our marriage and i've interviewed you know 10 year olds and 12 year olds and you know they're talking about um the fact that now they look forward to weekends because mum and dad spend more time with us. Um, and when we walk into, into our family room and see our family photo, we don't feel like we're coming into an empty house anymore. Mm. This is how important we are. 
but I, I just don't believe that as an industry, we realize the difference that we make to a child, to a family, to um, relationships, because, right. you know, we, we need to be, we need to take some responsibility for creating the best version of this family before we pick up a camera, because right. that's what they want to remember. So when we, when we photograph something that matters to somebody, that, that real connection, when somebody's, when a couple have started to go out of their way for each other again, and we photograph them in that time period, who wouldn't want to surround themselves with that? Right. I love right. that. I love, <laughs> okay. I just want you to see I just want you to know. I one more thing before I forget. Please. It. Yeah. Yeah. One more thing. Then, we have to stop selling our work. It's not our work. What we, and we need to stop selling a canvas or an acrylic or a, or a piece of wall art. We, what we're selling is every day when Jessica opens her eyes, she can feel that confidence that she truly has. So if that's what this client is looking for, for her child to feel confident, and she's described to you um, a time when she absolutely, absolutely feels confident, what we're selling is that child's confidence and to surround that child and remind them every day how unique they are, how special they are. And when we're selling and we're, we're helping people see their children's unique abilities and they want to, they, they just want to surround their child with that. So imagine that child's future. If they woke up every day being reminded of, that unique quality that they have. What does their future look like? Right. And this is what our industry really is capable of doing in reshaping the future for people's children, um, reestablishing relationships, helping people go out of their way for each other again as a couple and going back to that time when they just wanted to know everything about that person and rediscovering them. Like we mm -hmm. forget as a wedding, you know, I was at um, imaging and I was speaking to some of the models and there was a, a couple that were couples and, um, you know, the, the groom was in tears within 30 seconds of me talking to him because I, you know, everyone's photographing the bride and the groom was left in the corner. So I started talking to him and I asked him, you know, what is it about this woman that you love? And he goes, when I, got married the day I got married I, I thought I was in love with her but a year later because it was their anniversary he goes I love her I, I've discovered her I've lo I love her so much more now than I did on my wedding day I'm embarrassed to say this but I had no idea what love was then hmm. compared to now so how many, of, how many wedding photographers are contacting their clients on their wedding anniversary to celebrate this incredible love that after a year, what have you discovered about this person and where is your love right now? What have you learned about this person and, and are we celebrating that? And this is what I mean, going, the, you know, the crop hasn't even ripened yet on the wedding day. Right. There's so much more. Anyway, right. I'm digressing and I've taken over the conversation. So. Well, you're supposed to take over the conversation. It is your <laughs> conversation. And uh, I was just going to say people are, I'm crying. You're the best. Steve makes everybody cry. I think they meant that in a good way, though. Uh, just your rave reviews over here. So I just wanted you to know that you have some oh, raving awesome. fans, <laughs> raving fans. Um, you know, you know, Steve, I I'm love gonna, everything you're look saying. Look at all these questions here. You don't, you no, no, no. Don't look at this. <laughs> Rodan will let us know if there's something we need to talk about. Um, right. Um, I love what you're saying and I believe what you're saying just by the way, but I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Steve, I, I understand. I get it. But you know, I mean, I mean, I, I and I would, I'd call that couple after, you know, after their, and their anniversary, but they're just really busy. I mean, they're so busy. They haven't even finished their album yet and they work nonstop and they're just really busy. And I don't, I don't know, like, I, I hear what you're saying and it sounds really good, but how do I actually, you know, get their attention? Do you ever busy, heard that? <laughs> busy, busy is a disease. Yeah, it is a disease. Busy is a disease. And 
everybody's too busy. And that's the whole reason we exist. Mm -hmm. We exist to interrupt their busyness. Because if we don't, who's going to interrupt their busyness and who's going to, to save their marriage? Because if they're too busy to talk about what they love, about who they are, and they're too busy to talk to you about their children, what's their life going to look like? Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Right? So they haven't finished their album after a year. Like, really? Why have you not already pre-designed it? Why have you made it so hard for them that they can't choose and design their own album? They don't know what they're doing. They shouldn't be designing their own album anyway. That's our job. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Well, you know, Steve, I did design it, but it was going to be more money. So they didn't want to spend it. Well, then did you take photographs that mattered to them? Oh boy. <laughs> Love he has an answer for everything, y'all. <laughs> he has an answer for everything. <laughs> if you took photographs that matter, then the money never matters. People worry about, oh, I've got to raise my prices. I deserve more. Do you really? How much more value did you give to the client? Because it's not about raising prices. It's about increasing the value of what you do. Mm -hmm. We need to stop talking about raising our prices. We need to increase the value of what we give to a client. And, and we need to understand what a client values. So increasing the value of what a client values, not what we value. Right. So truly getting into the heads of a client, truly understanding their psychology, what they value and increasing that. You'll never have to worry about how much a client spends because they do it. Clients love spending money. Mm -hmm. Clients love retail therapy. Mm -hmm. When we give them something to buy, and in most cases, there's nothing to buy. Like I take on some clients and I go, oh, they're not spending, they're not spending. And I look at the shoot, there's nothing to buy. <laughs> right, and, I'll, and I'll be able to look at it and say, okay, any money they bought that, and that. And they go, yeah, how did you know? Well, that was all there was to buy. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, and you're not talking about bad technical. You're just talking about the story that. The story. The and relationship. Something that, a, something that a client would connect to. Right. And shooting for product. Um, yes, there's lots of variety, but it's confusing for the client. Nothing ties together. So where are those ones that tie together that make an incredible collection? So similar to, you know, that collection of my daughter, like it all ties together and tells a story. Um, it, it, we need to be shooting for product. Like a, it's similar to a, a, a wedding photographer. If you're not shooting for the album, you've got no album right. at the end of it. Portrait photography is the same. Unless you're shooting for the product that you're selling, we have nothing to sell. Right, exactly. Um, so when you think of some basic, well, let me just say this: all of us are hopefully, all of us will be coming out of this pandemic in a, in a different space. I hope, I hope a lot of what you're sharing and saying, which you've been saying well before this, but I hope we change. I hope the busy and the, this, and I hope we change. I hope that's something we don't go back to normal. If that's normal, let's leave that behind. You know, well, I think clients are making that shift. They're beginning to reconnect. They have to read. This is going to be make or break. You're now forced to spend time with your family. Yes. Forced. Forced to do that. And yeah. now is the time that our clients need us. We now have a captive audience. They're now forced to spend time with their family. They can either be resentful of that or we can help them celebrate and we can set up some challenges to help people um, help people connect. Mm -hmm. So I know in the, you know, I know in, um, in Mother's Day is coming and I'm, I'm assuming everybody has their Mother's Day promotion already out there. Um, for the UK, it's gone. So they're focused on Father's Day, but, you know, set up some challenges for, for them, you know, um, do a 10 day challenge where, you know, one day build, you're building a fort with dad and taking photos of, of you building a fort in your own home have a family picnic day, whether that's in the lounge room or in the backyard or on the, on the deck, whatever, wherever that is, set up challenges that bring families together 
and subliminally get them appreciating dad or appreciating mum. And, you know, what about a, a, a spa day for mum? Mm -hmm. You know, my, you know I, I put this challenge to my daughters for my ex-wife. I said, why don't you do a spa day? They get so excited. One's organising the foot spa. The other one's doing nails. The other one's doing a head massage. I'd love and it just helps families reconnect. Yeah. So that way, when you are then ready to launch Mother's Day, you've already got families that are engaged. You've already got families that are connected. You've already got families that are loving on, on each other. Why wouldn't they want to celebrate who this person is? Because you've shown them how important they are and you've made them feel special. Oh, I love that. So the 10 day challenge, and this is more like that education type of marketing we can do right now. And yeah, yeah anything we can do right now that we're sharing in our community and in our space where we have clients and they're thinking of us because we can't, where I am, or in my opinion, we can't be photographing them right now. That's where I am in my, my that state doesn't right mean now. You can't make any money, Mary. Well, that's another great point. That's another great point. And what can we do right now and make money then? Well, Mother's Day is coming. Right. And Father's right. Day is coming. There are people at home, and I'm speaking to mums because, you know, my daughters, you know, their friends, their mums, I'm speaking to them. They're craving, craving ways to make themselves feel good. And they've been conditioned to believe that to feel good, they have to go out and spend money. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for ways. They can't go to the shops. They're looking for ways to make themselves feel better. Why would you not, now that we have a captive audience, they can't go on holidays, which is our biggest competition to our industry. Yep. The holiday industry is our biggest competition, not the photographer next door. Right. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Our biggest competitor is it, we with our vacation money. We all still have our vacation money because we couldn't go on vacation this year. Yeah. Well, so everybody, everybody is, oh, in my town, nobody spends money and my clients are poor. Can they afford to go on a holiday? Oh my God, they're on holidays all the time. That's <laughs> our biggest competitor. They yeah. have money. <laughs> <laughs> Took care of that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh my God, they're always on holidays. Well, they can afford it. So, um, I've lost now. What was I no, saying? No, <laughs> that, that they want to spend and they have the money. Oh, yeah. So, you know, they want to spend and... Uh, have you created something for them to buy? Mm. So, you know, they could be spending, they could buy a $200 gift certificate from right. you, an $800 one, a $1,500 one, a $2,000 gift certificate from you. Right. Who knows? And that certificate that they then buy, they can then use in the future for when you are open. But right now they need to feel good. Right now they need something that they have done for themselves and they're craving for this. They're craving to be, feel recognized. They're craving to have something that to look forward to. Yes, I agree. And, and agree we more. can give them that. We can give them something to look forward to. And we're supporting our business because they have a need to spend and we need to be able to pay our bills and pay our staff and, and, you know, do all those things. Mother's Day is a huge one. It tends to be that one where people buy last minute. Mm -hmm. They don't tend to pre-buy like Christmas mm -hmm. um, and they tend to be a last minute spender. So you haven't missed the boat yet. There's only a couple of weeks left, I think, in the UK and the US for that. So, but all that pre-warming them up and getting them loving on each other as a mum, you know, needs to get, needs to be done. Yes. So that's how we can make money because we're selling our gift certificates. Um, I think that a lot of people stop booking people because they can't schedule them. There's yeah. a very big difference between a booking and scheduling a shoot. Mm -hmm. People can commit to purchasing a booking from you. And if we do it right and we excite them about what we're doing for them and they're visualizing this incredible piece of artwork that's going to make them feel like a real family, lots of people are prepaying for that piece of artwork because we've done the booking call correctly and we've excited them to the point that they just want to buy it now. Yeah. 
they have the money now, they want to, they want to put it aside so they give it to us to mine for them until they come in <laughs> to, yes. to buy it. And they know that they can't come in. They understand that you can't photograph yet. There's no expectation that you're going to photograph them now, but that booking is secure. That booking is, re is excited about coming in. Some of my students have over a hundred bookings waiting when those doors open, waiting to be scheduled. Right. And that's where you want to be. You want to have that um, cash flow now. Mm -hmm. Cash flow is king. Cash flow now, and you've set yourself up for future cash flow. Now, money spent is money forgotten. So when those people come in, they're going to spend. It's not going to affect how much they're going to spend on the day. Right. Oh, no, it won't. You're right. They forgot about that money. That always happens. You know, Steve, oh. somebody asked, and I'll, I think along the lines, what I think what you were saying that maybe 10 day leading up doing that scavenger hunt, that was kind of planting the seeds, planting the seeds, planting the seeds, and you're kind of mm -hmm. soft selling for those gift certificates, right? That's a great way to do that education marketing leading up to treat mom yeah. to this, you know, and mom's already feeling like, um, she's worth something because she's got all this attention. Yeah. Yes. And I think there's a, another big issue in it. There's lots of issues in our industry, but another big issue in our industry is that we believe clients are buying our work and they're buying what we are worth. Clients don't spend on what we are worth as photographers. As a person, you decide how much I am worth. Mm -hmm. Am I worth a $300 pair of shoes? If I am, then I'll buy that. Right. If I'm worth $5,000 pair of shoes, that's what I'm spending on a pair of shoes. If I only feel I'm worth a $20 pair of shoes from Lowe's, that's all I'm spending. Mm -hmm. So if we focus our energy on helping people feel valuable, on mums feeling like, my, feeling loved because we've set up these pamper days and we've, we've given them a challenge to feel like their children care about them, if they feel heard, if their husbands have gone out of their way because we've set up a challenge to create a perfect day, if you were to create a perfect day for that wo woman you love, what would that look like? She opens her eyes. What's the first thing that she's waking up? What is the first thing that you've prepared for her? Right. And even if all we do is allow him to create an hour or an instant where she wakes up to a treasure hunt and that first clue of the treasure hunt takes her back to that first time that they met, mm. right? Mm -hmm. That's a different client to one where you've said, okay, so don't forget, wear your blue jeans, wear your white shirt. I've got <laughs> a perfect field. I've got a secret location. What do you call this location? <laughs> You're so <laughs> right on that one. <laughs> and it becomes so right. all about me, the location, and have you seen my work? I've won all these awards. I'm worth this much. Who cares what you're worth? A client's only worth? going to spend up to their value and what they believe their family is worth, right. not what we are worth. Mm -hmm. So if we focus on increasing how much they feel, uh, how much they feel their family is worth, most people these days wake up, look in the mirror and hate that person that's looking back at them and wonder what happened. So if we can help people feel valuable enough to be photographed, then they'll spend. They just will. Yeah. We don't have to sell. <laughs> it just sells out. <laughs> I just want it. I, well, and I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. I think that um, that feels easier said than done to a lot of people. Um, and anybody that's maybe feeling with like that right now, and I, I'm sure there are, I mean, there's times when I feel that way, quite frankly. So if they're in that mind space where, well, that all sounds well and good, but, and you know that they're out there, but that I don't know how I'm not that I can't, I mean, What's the first thing? So we're all going to be coming out of this. What's the first thing? What can we start working on right now? Besides, I love the idea and I'm actually now I'm like, oh, wait, why am I, why am I not selling gifts to Vegas for Mother's Day? So I'm, I'm totally on it. I'm on it. But <laughs> besides that, what can we be working on? So then we come out of this that we feel that missing confidence. What, what can we do, Steve? Because 
it's easy. We, it, we can stand here and we can talk about it or stand on a stage and lecture about it. And I do the same thing. And I, but what can we do to fix that, to feel better and be more confident? We need to get out there as a, as a, as a species. Um, we weren't, we weren't designed to be by ourselves. We were designed to be in a tribe mm -hmm. and you need to find your tribe. And that's not going to happen sitting behind a computer retouching all day and all night. Mm -hmm. So we need to communicate and we need to find our tribe. So um, right now we have a captive audience of all these people sitting at home, desperate for somebody to talk to. I know John's watching John, John's online. Yep. And he, he spent Christmas alone. That was not Christmas. Easter came along um, and most families couldn't go and visit their family because, and they missed out mm -hmm. on that family time on being around people. But what did John do? He didn't sit at home by himself. He went out and delivered, hand delivered photos that were ready to his clients. And for some of these people that were sitting alone, it was the only human contact that they've had for weeks. Right. And even though it was through a window, even though it was contactless for them, it made their day. And it made him feel a lot better because he was no longer alone and he went and did something for someone else. So we need to stop, you know, feeling sorry for ourselves. We need to get up and help other people. Right now, we have a brilliant opportunity, huge, huge opportunity to contact our local businesses and say, hey, been thinking about you. What are you doing to, um, what's your recovery strategy? How can I help you recover? And when leading up to this, so many doors were closed mm -hmm. to us, but right now every door is open. So if all we do is pick up the phone and call some of these local businesses that we could potentially create a strategic alliance with or a third party alliance, whatever your verbiage is for that. Yep. Um, suddenly the doors are open because people need to find ways to, to market themselves and start up again. I honestly believe right now people are reevaluating their own business. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm a little bit, um, skewed in the way I view the world, but um, you know, the business owners that I'm talking to, and, and you, because I get attracted to positive, happy people, they're the ones that I, keep, I, I bother to talk to. If somebody's grumpy and miserable, I just want to get out of there. Right. So those businesses that are bright and happy and chirpy, um, you know, I've said, okay, so you know what's happening? How are you going? Are you okay? How, how is your business going? And they're like, Steve, they're like, yes, um, numbers of people are down, but I don't, this was my mechanic. I went and um, he called me about my car. So we had a conversation. He says, but people are spending six times hmm. what they normally spend on their cars because they've been holding off, holding off, holding off. And now, right. that, they can, now that they can have their car off the road for a couple of days and it doesn't matter, they're getting all the major stuff done. So instead of an average of two or $300 per, per visit, they're getting 3,000, 4,000 from people. Right. And that's important for us to know as an industry because money is out there. Mm -hmm. People oh, are yeah, spending. Yeah. To it's the point where in the U S we have our insurance companies are sending us rebates and refunds because we're not driving. We're not using, I mean, so there's a lot of, there is, and vacations and trips, big things have been canceled. Graduation parties. I personally <laughs> can tell you that two big trips. I mean, you know, this, I mean, we're, there's so I'm much. Spending, I'm not spending a hundred dollars a week on fuel. Oh no. And I mean, I'm not, I mean, I had two graduations and all kinds of stuff that got canceled. So all that money's just, I'm dying to spend my money. Like yeah. I, 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 like I, I was talking to my friend the other day. I was like, I just am really need to do something. And I really am missing traveling, but capturing that energy and doing that. Um, I know we're going to get tight on time, but I, I love the fact that you mentioned the community partnerships or the Alliance. Um, and someone did just ask a question. What example would be for photographers to work with other businesses to make it 
effective for us is what they ask. But I mean, maybe make it a mutually beneficial. What can we do with that kind of alliance? I didn't understand the question. Yeah. So how do we create what, what, okay. You mentioned the community alliance, the partnership idea, right? I think their question is what makes that beneficial for our business? It will only ever be beneficial for us if it's beneficial for them. Right. So the problem is when we go into these partnerships, we, we are all about what we can get out of it. It's never going to be a long-term relationship and it's never going to be a positive relationship unless you put that other business first. So a lot of businesses now and the people that I've been speaking to have, are making more money now than they ever have because a lot of their costs, the, the total... Um, the total revenue might be down, but their profits are up because mm-hmm. a lot of their costs have now gone. Mm-hmm. So they have more money to invest now than they ever have. And I think businesses now are re-evaluating how they're going to be doing business in the future. There's a lot of people now that I believe are, go- are going to want to keep some of this profit in their business because that's, the reality of how you make a living profit, not how much you turn over. Yes. How much money you get to keep is is more important than your turnover. So, uh, but you can't have one without the other, obviously. Um, But for a lot of them, they want to have this safety net of keeping a lot of their business online and keeping that convenience online. Um, Even the, you know, the, my, my daughter works for a donut store They've always struggled. This has saved their business. Mm. They've made more money during this time than they ever have, more profit and more turnover because they've adapted their business. They've cre- Instead of just selling donuts over the counter, they're now taking orders for kids' packs because parents don't have time and they're homeschooling and they've created kids' packs where people can build their own donuts. So you can get the Sporky set. You can get the... The, you know, you build the Toy Story one. And my daughter's there counting pipe cleaners and right eyes and and they, they're spending ten dollars per pack and they wake up in the morning and there's 150 to 200 orders. How can I help you right as a business? How can I help you keep your business online and move your business online? When we go in to help people then okay. all those opportunities arise. So to answer that question is it's, you need to find out what people's biggest frustrations are. Yeah. And we have to help them solve it. For most businesses, um, it's about increasing their average sale and it's about customer loyalty. So could you provide a gift certificate to their best clients to reward them for being their best client. Mm -hmm. If there is a business that we believe ties in with our branding, ties in with our values, and this is where Mm -hmm. I think people fail. They don't look at that. Yeah. It has to be like-minded, right? It has to be a like-minded business. Your brand is now being represented by somebody. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 And the other piece of that is to help them. And this is what we do. And I I completely agree is that if we partner with a like-minded business and that is huge, Steve is so correct on that. We partner with that like-minded business. It has to be something beneficial. It always has to be win-win, but if their average sale right now is $200 and they want it to be 250, say, well, you can give them this gift card to our studio if they spend 250 or more. Now you've helped them raise their average sale. They're incredibly grateful and it's just a win-win. So that's how you make those partnerships work for you. I know there's more questions than we'll ever be able to answer, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I brought on such a fantastic speaker and I tried not to talk too much and let him just talk, but we'll let Ronan pop back over and tell me the questions that maybe I'm missing that were in the Q&A, Ronan. Hi, guys. Hi. I know. Too many. I can't. I know. Talk. I know. And my head is exploding again. I don't know. It's just <laughs> I can't explode, keep up. <laughs> exploding. Um, so, so Christy wants to know, how do you create a referral scheme using existing clients that doesn't devalue the experience for them? So I think a lot of photographers fear that depending on the referral scheme that they use, that their client might feel that they're being taken advantage of. 
I think um, that's what she's getting at. Do you have okay. any referral program ideas for referring more business, like-minded business to you from your existing clients? Um, in my process, I have a whole process um, a okay. whole just on building alliances. And one of the rules is that you are never, ever, 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 ever allowed, ever, <laughs> ever to bring on an alliance that has not been through your experience. So the first place we ever look to build alliances is our past clients. So as you're photographing people, you're looking for people that either own a business, a small business, or work for a small business until they have been through an experience, until they have spent money with you, until they, they truly have had a transformational experience where they feel more loved, they feel heard, and they feel valued enough to spend money with you, they don't qualify as an alliance because the last thing you need is for somebody to hand over a gift certificate and say, here you go, here's a $300 gift dollars go, to go, but just be careful, they're gonna try and sell to you. Or do you want, or do you want that person True. to say, oh my God, I've done this, it's completely changed my life. These people saved my marriage. Do you know what, be prepared, it's gonna cost you $3,000, but by God, it's the best money you're ever gonna spend. Which one yeah. do you want? Nobody can tell anybody how sweet the donut is until they've tasted it. <laughs> okay. When you have somebody delivering each gift certificate with that energy, that conviction, that confidence, that transfers over to that next client. So there are alliances that some of my, the people that I coach have that their average sale is over $7,000. It's consistent because that person believes in you so much because you've given them so much that they prepare the client and they select the people that they're going to send to you. Right. Right. And these are people that are purchasing gift certificates from you. They believe in you so much that they're spending $200 for a gift certificate to give to their best clients because they believe in what you do so much that they're prepared to spend money on those gift certificates to give to their clients. That is never going to happen if that you have not given them a transformational experience and they have invested in you. If they haven't invested in you, they're just going to send you shit. I mean, crap. Um, they're just going to send you crap. Crap. <laughs> That's all right. I'm Irish. I'm used to that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I love it. So I think, I think there's just not enough time in the day that we can no. even begin. But if you need or want, which we all need more Steve Saparito in your life, uh, run and put it in the, the discussion panel, but Steve Saparito education.com. Check it out there. Um, there's just, there's no way we're going to get to all the questions. I apologize. I feel like a terrible host. No, <laughs> we can't, we can't. Can I just share one, one last thing? 30 seconds. Reach out to your businesses, your community. Reach out to those businesses. We've had a few people do this and it's been incredible where we've done a price match. So, you know, that Ma and Pa restaurant that is struggling to survive, that they're doing takeaway now. Mm -hmm. A lot of my clients now, what they're doing is a price match. So we love this restaurant. We would eat in this restaurant. We don't want this restaurant to die. And so we're going to say, hey, do you know what? I'm going to let everybody on my Facebook page know that you're still service, serving people and how awesome you are. How about if they, they take a photograph of their receipt and they send it to me, I'll price match whatever they spend with you. I will give them up to $200 worth of value in my studio. So they're now promoting you. The, the restaurant's promoting you. You're promoting them, their clients. They, you're being talked about as they're waiting for their food. They're now sending you their, their receipts and building up their credit towards their photos. You're building business for you. So that when you do open up, you're ready to go. That then starts a conversation of, oh my God, we have people that come in and spend, you know, they spend $500 a week with us. Okay. Oh my God, that's awesome. Here you go. What if I give you <laughs> to the, your best clients? If somebody's spending 500 a week on, on, on um, takeaway, from a restaurant and, and don't pick 
a rubbishy place, pick a brand that you would want to be associated with. Sorry, now I'm going to- No, you, that's a genius idea. I'm already doing that, Steve, and it is working brilliantly. Thank you. Right. That is genius. Okay, I'm going to summarize. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate you. You were amazing. The two of you are amazing. So the five key messages I got, Steve, and correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will because you always do. Um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the, the sale is made before you even pick up your camera. Two, you have to no, get the experience. people. The experience. The experience. I'm coming to that. <laughs> you have to you have to get people so get out from behind your computer spending time editing and get to know people two you have to figure out ways to encourage your clients to value the relationships they have and discover those relationships because when you do the sale is done there's no sale four there's no selling exactly it's done that. by doing that customer loyalty that don't forget the lifetime value of the client. So it's much easier to build relationships and continue to sell to that client over the lifetime of that client than it is to find new clients. And finally, the, and this is something that I talk about all the time as well, which Mary will agree with, you know, you have to value the important job our industry does. I'm always talking that, you know, our industry makes people healthier in mind, body, and spirit. And Steve elaborated so beautifully on that today mm -hmm. when he talked about what our industry actually does for people. We are not a luxury. Right now, the world needs us more than ever before. And most people need to feel valued. They need to feel again. They need to stop and appreciate what they have. We are not a luxury item. We are something that our, the world needs. And people want what we have to give when we listen to what they need. Oh, well, I think we all need more Steve Saperito. So go to stevesaperitoeducation.com. Don't miss that. I know that you have platforms and diff all different things. Everybody that's in them is like literally singing your praises. We need more Ronin and 3XM because you guys are phenomenal. And giving us this platform has just been just a God, it's just been amazing. You know, we feel a little isolated, but I know I can always do this and see my friends and see all these great things. So gosh, thank you guys so much. Y'all are both amazing and I can't thank you enough. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, everybody. I'm so worried. You made it so easy. Thank you are you. great. You are perfect. <laughs> so Love wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, or good night. <laughs> Goodbye. Cheers. <laughs>